Welcome again. And in this session, we are reading Luke chapter 22, verses 1 through 6. And this is Satan enters Judas. Let's start with verse 1. Now the feast of unleavened bread, which is called the Passover, was approaching. The chief priests and the scribes sought how they might put him to death, for they feared the people. Satan entered into Judas, who was also called Iscariot, who was counted with the twelve. He went away and talked with the chief priests and captains about how he might deliver him to them. They were glad and agreed to give him money. He consented and sought an opportunity to deliver him to them in the absence of the multitude. I've always marveled in my walk with the Lord, in my walk with God, that, you know, I've been to some really powerful meetings, some really wonderful meetings, and, and uh, I've always wondered how some people can be right beside me, literally right beside me, in a meeting that, you know, that is a life-changing meeting for me. You know, the, the message could be awesome. The presence of, the, of, of God, the power of God present there could be very awesome. You know, everything could be just like, just so, so wonderful, life-changing for me. Yet the person beside me can walk away as if, as if they didn't even, <laughs> they didn't even see a thing or hear a thing. Although they see, like Jesus said, they see with their eyes, but yet they don't really see. You know, they hear with their ears, but yet they don't really hear. They don't really understand. They don't really get it. They, it just like in one ear, out the other ear, so to speak. You know, they see it, but it just does not register. It just, not, you know, does not compute. So it makes me wonder, you know, and it's, it's, it's a marvel to me that somebody can walk and talk with Jesus, you know, day in, day out, week in, week out, month in, month out, year in, year out. And yet that person can allow Satan to enter them. You know, one of the primary characteristics of Satan is the accuser. Actually, the word Satan uh, comes from a word which means accuser, the accuser of the brothers, the, the accuser of the brethren. Satan is like the prosecutor. Satan is like somebody who, the spirit of Satan is the spirit that tries to find wrong, something wrong with somebody so that they can prosecute them, so that they can get them in trouble, so that they can hand them over to the authorities. So they, you know, in, in street language, they can rat them off. And here, even the most holy man that's ever walked the face of this earth, Jesus, the most powerful man that's ever walked the face of this earth, the most marvelous and most awesome man that's ever walked the, the face of this earth, Jesus, had somebody who was with him, one of his own close disciples, part of the twelve, turn on him. You know, Satan enters Judas, turns on Jesus, and betrays him. Again, it makes me wonder how this, this kind of stuff can happen. You know, again, and also, too, there are people who are, you know, maybe even preachers, uh, church leaders that um, end up backsliding or end up denying the faith. And some of these preachers or ch church leaders can be, you know, uh, very, very good in, in a sense, you know, in their own ministry, in their own way, you know, in their own time. They could have been, a, you know, a very famous preacher or, you know, a very well-respected preacher or church leader, and yet they would turn on the Lord. Why this happens uh, is, is a great marvel. Now, we know that uh, Judas was used of God to, uh, to bring Jesus to... Uh, to the authorities and to ultimately cru crucify him, uh, to scourge him, to uh, to beat him mercilessly, 
uh, to strip him uh, and to torture him and to crucify him. And we know that the crucifixion of Jesus was absolutely necessary. Uh, if it wasn't for the crucifixion of Jesus, where would the world be today? Uh, and the world might not even be in existence. Uh, he, the human race might have uh, already, uh, you know, have uh, uh, committed suicide, so to speak, if it wasn't for the work of the cross and the resurrection. So, yeah, it's a great marvel how someone could walk and talk with Jesus, see him, hear him. How many of us, millions, if not billions of us, would have loved to have been there, to have taken the spot of Judas, so to speak, to have walked and talked with Jesus, to have lived with him, ate with him, you know, been with him when he, you know, when he uh, woke up in the morning, when he ate breakfast, when he taught the multitudes, when he did all the miracles. How many would love to have been in that position? And here Judas, and this is another thing too. Judas was an ingrate. Obviously, he wasn't grateful for the position that he was in. He wasn't grateful for being uh, with Jesus like millions of us would have been. Millions of us would have pretty much died for that position. I'm sure millions of us would have given everything we got for that position. Our homes, our houses, you know, everything but the clothes off our back just to be in the position where J Judas was in. But Judas didn't seem to be very grateful. Um, he allowed Satan to enter him. He allowed the thoughts to be entertained in his mind to, to betray the one that he should have loved and should have been so grateful to be around. To betray the Lord of glory, the, the, most, the most righteous man ever lived. The most holy man that's ever lived. The, I mean, goodness, you can't top Jesus when it comes to goodness. He was, he was the most good, if, if, if you can say it that way. He was the most good. Um, there wasn't another man that has ever lived or ha ever will live that will, will have goodness like Jesus had goodness. He was a very, very, if I can say it again, very good man. But Judas thought that he had, you know, um, Judas was maybe a little bit, tad a little bit angry with Jesus. You know, you look in the, in the other Gospels, um, just before Judas betrayed Jesus, just before Satan entered Judas, uh, was the time when uh, the woman, they were at the house there where the woman had the alabaster jar of perfume. Uh, and uh, that jar of perfume was considered to be very, very expensive. And uh, I understand like it was like today, it could be compared to tens of thousands of dollars just for that jar of perfume. Very, very expensive perfume. It's like one of the most expensive perfumes you could get in the world. Um, and so she poured that entire, you know, uh, jar of perfume over Jesus. Uh, and Judas became angry and said, this should have been sold. And, uh, the money should have been given to the poor, not just wasted like this, you know, and Jesus, we, you know, the story, Jesus said, well, you know, the poor, you, you always have the poor with you. You will always have the poor with you, but you won't always have me with you. What she has done is a good thing. And Judas was angry with it, with, with Jesus because, um, you know, it was a, pre, it was a hip, hypocritical thing because he pretended to be uh, concerned about the poor, as it says in the other Gospels, that he pretended to be concerned about the poor, but what he was really all about was money. He was thinking it in the back of his mind. He was thinking, oh, uh, yeah, we could have sold this for lots and lots of money and, um, and given to the poor. But you know what would have happened? Judas would have dipped his hand into the pot of money as well, as it says that he was known to do. So he was angry because he lost lots of money there. He lost lots of money. Uh, and, uh, and Jesus seemed to be okay with that. 
And so he got a chip on his shoulder. Judas got a chip on his shoulder. He did not walk in grace. He did not walk in forgiveness. He walked in bitterness against Jesus because of that. And this is what happens a lot with, with people. Almost everybody who has, uh, you know, there are people that say, especially Christians that say, oh, the, you know, Satan is, 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 uh, is attacking Oh, you know, uh, the, the sp- an evil spirit or a demon is, uh, is oppressing me or, or whatever, or, you know, that kind of thing. Um, there are other people that are oppressed and attacked by Satan. They don't even know. They have no clue what it, what's going on. They just know, you know they, might, they might call it depression. They might call it, uh, I'm not, you know, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying all depression is an evil spirit. Uh, that's not what I am saying. Although I think that probably a good part of it, if, you know, if not all of it, a good part of it is. Um, but um, a lot of times when Christians do not walk in grace toward other people, when they do not walk in love toward other people, if they get a chip on their shoulder, if they're angry about something, and they do not walk in forgiveness, that is opening the door to Satan. That's like opening your front door of your house, putting a great big sign out on it saying, welcome, everybody welcome, come on in, open, open house. And uh, Satan will be walking by there and Satan will just come right in. And that's what happens when people are bitter uh, angry, they don't forgive, they don't walk in grace. Uh, they're, you know, they, uh, they have a chip on their shoulder. They nurse a chip on their shoulder, so to speak. So it's very important to, to walk in grace, to walk in forgiveness. Something, you know, somebody does something against you or some, somebody does something against someone else. Don't, don't have a chip on your shoulder. Don't be bitter against that person. Um, don't be angry with that person. Uh, forgive. And, uh, and you will close that door uh, that, that Satan could walk through, okay? That the evil spirits could walk through. Because you don't want to end up like Judas. Um, it's just a very, very sad situation. Well, that concludes our uh, reading of Luke chapter 22, verses 1 through 6. And as you go, again, meditate upon the scriptures. Always think about the scriptures of God. Always think about God. It's You know, it says in the scriptures that He will keep you. He will keep you in perfect peace if your mind is stayed solid on Him. If your mind is is stayed on God. If your mind is stayed on him, he will keep you in perfect peace. And one of the best ways to keep your mind stayed on God is to keep your mind stayed on the scriptures. For it's the scriptures that we learn about all these things. So as you go, be blessed. Keep the word of God in your mind at all times. Seek him with all your heart and you, and, and you will find him. And may he show you great and mighty things and give you revelation beyond that of all your peers. Thanks again for watching.